Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode 261. Would you believe that tomorrow's show is going to be a full year? Well, technically, today would be like the last show of this first year of me having done this particular podcast. Like, how cool is that? Holy, did it ever go by fast. I am so incredibly grateful. I've really noticed that the <clears throat> choice to show up five times a week for myself this way has really created um, uh, created uncovering. You know, for me, in a way, it's almost been like journaling. Like sometimes when you journal or even when you have a conversation with someone, you'll have something that's bothering you. And part of the thing of talking about it is, is an unpacking. And as you're unpacking it, you're, it's coming up and out of your body. And then it's, you know, um, it allows space for you to hear what's underneath. It allows space for something new to come in. And uh, that's what this podcast has been a lot. It, it has been a lot like that for me. And because there has been days where, you know, gosh, I mean, I think there was one day I, I forgot about it and I didn't post, you know, like put it on until a little later in the day. I've had a few times where I have done it and then forgot to post it. And then I, I'll have a friend go, hey, Lori, where's your show? <laughs> you know, but, uh, silly me. And then uh, and I've had days where I haven't felt like doing it. I'm like, I don't know what to talk about. I don't feel like this. I, you know, and I kept showing up anyways. And I'm really proud of myself for that. I'm really, really proud of myself for that. Now, what I've been really aware of, it's interesting because I've been noticing that my body has been lately like, okay, let's dance. Like, let's just dance in the living room, you know, and I have these body groove DVDs. And then I also, you know, then there's just music, right? And I'm really aware that my body would like that. And I've not been choosing it yet. So um, I wonder how much I can invite the energy of what I chose with this podcast, you know, for me. And because uh, when it comes right down to it, really in the end, like the podcast is for me. I've got to enjoy it. It's got to be fun for me. It's got to contribute to my life. And that's like us, for us all with anything um, you know, even though I'm so grateful for the feedback that I get about it, like I really am, I, I'm just so incredibly grateful. I got a beautiful Christmas card, you know, a week or so ago from someone who listens and thank you, like really thank you. And, uh, I'll get feedback in other ways too. I've had the odd email, um, you know, I've had it through Snapchat, uh, just, yeah, I'm really, really grateful. And it's, it wouldn't be any fun if I was just talking to a wall. And I'm also really well aware that it has to be fun for me and contribute to me. So it's been interesting for me to be able to listen to myself to see what's interesting in my world. Um, what's the kind of stuff that I like to talk about? Um, yeah, just all of that. So it, it's been a beautiful, you know, your journey. So, cause the very first show I actually did was just, was Christmas Eve last year in 2018. And so today is December 23rd, if you're depending on when you're listening, but I'm recording this on the day it's going to be posted, which is December 23rd. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm just so grateful for this experience and what it's been like for me. So, Ah, thanks for listening. I'm, I'm really, really, really grateful. So, um, what do I want to talk about today? Well, you know, uh, this weekend I was watching, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that show called Long Lost Family. So basically, you know, it's where kids that were adopted or parents that adopt, you know, put kids up for adoption, um, siblings trying to find siblings, it's, it's that kind of, that kind of show. So they go on the show and 
then, you know, there's a couple of hosts that will then, Lisa and I forget the other guy's name, they go and they use their resources and it could be ancestry DNA, it could be, you know, through the computer, whatever. So they go looking for these people and pretty much all the time, the shows that they show anyways, they do find the people. And uh, I guess that would be sort of the whole point of it, right? It wouldn't be very fun to put a show on where they look for people and don't find them. <laughs> so, but it's actually very fascinating too, to see in my world, like what people do needed to do what they um what they believed how they were supported in to be able to make a choice to either give a child up for adoption um and the thing that's really 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 interesting is over and over again like i was not adopted okay so if you're someone who was adopted you may really relate to this in the fact that you wondered why they didn't want to keep you like were you not worthy were you not deserving and I get that that is a really big theme. This is not where I thought I was going to go. Uh, it's a really big theme for all of us. Uh, I, um, having since gone to Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshop in September, they do these things where they call them coherence healings. And so when you actually go to the workshop, you have to, you can apply, you don't have to, you can apply for a coherence healing. And throughout the week, Dr. Joe will get the entire room doing healings on people that have asked for them. And so just one sec here. Thanks. I had to pause to cough because just before I started recording the show, I had kind of like inhaled coffee instead of drinking it. Um, anyway, so at this workshop, you, um, they eight people they put eight people in what he calls it a cage it, but it's a group of people and then one person lays down on the floor in the middle of everybody and then everyone taps into their heart they take this energy of gratitude of the healer that they be uh the wholeness the oneness and then they take that energy and they expand it out of their bodies all the way uh, all the way around them and you tap into the quantum field to the void to the infinite possibilities and when you're doing that it then that energy you become that energy your body becomes that energy and you flow that energy through you and then at some point you then are guided to put your hands towards the people that are on the floor and then they receive the coherent energy of the eight people that are surrounding them and it has done some miraculous things and some are more obvious than others. So I had, I received one of those healings in Niagara Falls and mine didn't become yet a healing of, you know, one day you have a disease and the next day it's gone. Uh, but when I look back at how much my life has changed and I'm actually going to do a video testimonial and I'm going to share it, um, a video testimonial of what has changed for me since I started doing Dr. Joe Dispenza's, the, like his particular meditations. And uh, it was really interesting because last week um, I met a fella who'd been meditating for 40 years. And this is a fella, he looked like he was probably in his late seventies, maybe his eighties even. And he said, I did meditated for 40 years. And he says, when I started doing Dr. Joe's meditations, he said, there is nothing like these meditations that like what this creates in your world, in your life, in your body. And then at the same time, if you invite in like what he's learned from his own meditation experience, you know, and that's Dr. Joe, and then the science that he knows behind it and what he's seen with brain scans and coherence healings and stuff, um, there's this wealth and this beauty of this information that he shares. And it literally... I mean, it's changed my life. Like it's changed my life. It's changed my heart. It's changed my desire to be here, to engage, to love life, to be alive and uh, be vulnerable and love. And I find I'm just so much more kinder to myself and to, you know, others that are, are around me. And, but to a depth of kindness, that's not like just being nice. There's a kindness that goes even beyond that. So anyways, um, oh, now I was trying to bring, uh, just one second here. 
All right. <clears throat> I had to pause the recording because I knew I started going somewhere and I needed to tap back into that energy. I knew it was really important. So I actually just took a minute here and tapped into my heart and expanded it into the space all around me and asked the the divine to bring back where I had started going with it. And I realized that I was I was going down the the deserving and the worthy. And um, that going back to the show, Long Lost Family, how important it was to these kids, especially that had been adopted, kids that are now adults that had been adopted, how much they needed to know that they were thought about, that they were not given up because they weren't worthy. They weren't given up because they weren't deserving. They were actually given up because they were loved, that they were thought about every single day since they were given up. And the what I see changes in their world energetically and the relief that's created. And it's like this whole program just gets erased and dissipated and let go out of their body. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's so incredible to watch. And I actually had that same thing um, when I experienced my heal, the co-heal, the coherence healing in Niagara Falls was that like for mine was this fairly non-eventful. I laid on the floor. It was a beautiful energy and then it was done. And I got lovely hugs from everybody around me. And again, what I've noticed is my healing has been more mental and emotional. It's been hugely mentally and emotionally. Well, I got chosen for another one. I asked for one. So when you go to Dr. Joe's workshop, you can join into these Facebook groups and then you can ask for a coherence healing and then people around the world will gather and they will do one for you. So I actually had one last night again. And it was really interesting because it talked about uh, being deserving, that we are deserving that it is, we're not wrong that we've created illness in our body. We're not wrong that we've created trauma drama or not. We're not wrong that we have a relationship that doesn't work for us or that we have a job that doesn't work for us or anything. We're not wrong. And that it's changeable. And if we love ourselves through this, we actually are deserving and we are worthy of a beautiful, beautiful life. I, uh, got an email so they have these mind movies things I think I talked about them before it's like a PowerPoint where you put affirmations and then you watch it and instead of doing a commercial that you know programs you to buy the next toy or this medication you're actually programming yourself to the life that you want and one of the affirmations was I love my life I love my life and I there was actually a song that was played at Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshop and it's called, I love my life. I can't remember. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually put it in the, um, I'll link it in the pod podcast uh, description. Okay. It is so beautiful. This song, uh, uh I'm, I'm just finding it. Yeah. <laughs> so find it. And then, but it, it's so neat. The it, it's by this uh, I think Robbie Robbie Williams and I love my life. You are worthy of loving your life. You are deserving of loving your life, and uh, I wish that for you. And as I move into my second year of this podcast, I really truly desire for everyone to have to love themselves and to love their lives. And I had read something yesterday too. Um, who was it again? Oh, Ram Das. Uh, he's this guy who wrote Be Here Now, I think. Uh, he passed away yesterday and he was 88 and he's someone like in sort of the spiritual uh, new age world. He, he, his one book sold like millions of copies. And he said, I would like my life to be an achievement of, and I don't remember what his was, but I looked at it and I was like, what would I want my life to be an achievement of? I would like my life to be, oh, a statement of, and I would love my life to be a statement of self-love and trust, self-trust. Yeah, actually that makes me cry when, it, when you know, thinking about it. I would like my life to be a statement of self-love and self-trust. 
Yeah. You know, and I wish that for you. And I know that when the more that I have that, the more that that's available for other people to choose and to have. You are worthy of having the life that you desire. You are deserving. And the one thing I just want to say is that if you're okay with sort of letting yourself not can over control your life, the universe, the divine God source will actually surprise and delight you, you will get what you're asking for. And it'll be more beautiful than you can imagine. I was just sharing with someone on a phone call earlier today, a friend of mine who's visiting some family in uh, British Columbia. And I said, you know, my life on the outside would look like it's exactly the same as it was a year ago. And I will tell you, it is completely, completely different. I'm so incredibly grateful. So I'm great, grateful for you. I love my life. Yeah. Anyways, you guys have a great day. Love you all. Thanks for listening and look forward to tuning in with you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.